Um, hi everybody, this is really amazing. Um, Chris Wenzel and me did a similar thing uh, last to do conference and we had like 160 signups and um, seeing all you guys here is really amazing. Um, looks like big data becomes a big thing now. Okay, so I would love to um, talk about democratizing big data. So let me just tell you I'm working on this since a long time. I was a early contributor to Nudge that spinned off Hadoop. I did things like uh, distributed Lucene Index Kata and all that stuff. So I'm working on this stuff since a uh, long time. And in 2008, doing consulting for many companies again and again, building big data analytics um, platforms, we looked into this and said, um, this is way too complicated. And big data analytics is uh, only exclusively um, to big companies, to companies that can afford software development and big hardware and so on. So we founded a company that made it a little easier. Anyhow, the problem obviously is data keeps growing. The term enterprise amnesia is used to describe that companies can only store and analyze three months of data. Um, that's not that much. And um, what is obviously interesting is that all data grows, not just those of companies. And um, what is really exciting um, for me personal, working a long time in this field, um, is to see that we're actually moving forward to make big data analytics accessible to everybody. We now have Amazon Web Services in EMR. What is great, I don't need to buy 10 machines anymore because I personally, or my little organization, or my startup, can't afford to buy a 10 node cluster. We now have Hadoop, it's open source, implementing the um, infrastructure of Google. That's awesome, again, it's open source, free available. But we also have big data, accessible to everybody. There's the open Twitter API, uh, the work, work bank just uh, published the data, there's a human genome project, there's Freebase. Big data is everywhere, not just in your company. And I think there are interesting insights in freely accessible big data. And um, it's now getting even easier from a technology point of view to look at this. There are things like Pick and Hive that provide SQL um, front end to Hadoop, so you don't need to write um, MapReduce jobs anymore. Who likes to write MapReduce jobs? Right? One, two, three. Yay, old school. <laughs> um, who likes to use Emacs for writing software? Yeah, a little bit more, okay, cool. So, um, all right, so there are things like cascading that makes it extremely easy um, as a Java API to write map reduce jobs anymore, and you don't need to write this map reduce, map reduce, map reduce codes any, uh, jobs anymore. And there are things like um, what we do at Datamia, we're providing a spreadsheet user interface and make it re extremely simple. But I think what is interesting is that if you look at the whole stack, you can now do big data analytics and process one terabyte of data for less than 100 bucks. So it becomes accessible to everybody, right? Um, you're using EMR on S3 and you're using tools like Cascading Pick or Datamia to really do something as an individual maybe even or as a small startup. <clears throat> now let me give you a small example um, what I personally did just to play around with this stuff because when I was young I thought with technology I can change the world. I'm not sure why you went into technology, it was always very exciting for me. So I used the public Twitter API, collected over a few months, um, uh, you know, the Twitter data, 34 million tweets basically, stored it in S3, and then used Elastic MapReduce, uh, used our product, uh, data analytics solution, and an open source uh, graph visualization tool, and looked into things like who is actually influencing different movements. And what was interesting is, first of all, I looked into uh, one very common trending topic in Twitter, Justin Bieber. And this is a celebrity, 15 years old, right, pop star. And um, here, here he is. What I thought was very interesting is that people just talking to each other about him, or, you know, he has all this um, uh, fans uh, that talk to him. But as you see, it's not very well connected. And then I looked into um, tweets about the Tea Party. I'm European, don't have a political statement here, I have my free healthcare. But I thought what was very interesting, what was very interesting is how 
deeply connected this network is. So I moved forward, I calculated PageRank where I took the retweet as basically a link and tried to identify who is the influencers. It's actually not the people that um, you know, having a lot of followers, it's the thought leaders that then know the right people and getting the world spread in the long tail. And I think the, you know, the message I'm trying to say here is uh, I would love to encourage everybody to step a little bit back and not just look at the MapReduce jobs and the cool Hadoop stuff. And I know I'm, I'm software developed by my heart too, so I love to drive the big trucks and like the big machines. And this is really all exciting. But let's make the next step and look into what we can do with this technology. And there's so much going around, BP oil spill, um, so much politics stuff, and there's so much data around, flight pattern, uh, environment data, and I think it's interesting that we, now everybody, small startups, individuals, organization, can look into this and getting more insights. Thank you.